to fifth gear. Today we are pitting two top-end SUVs against each other in our 4x4 dogfight. You want SUV excess? Look no further. We have two beautiful examples. Behold, this. It's blue. It's the Range Rover Sport SVR. Land Rover virtually invented off-roading and claimed this is the world's most capable performance SUV. A 0-62 time of 4.5 seconds and a top speed of 176. The base model cost is just a shade under 100 grand. And it has the biggest wheels and least subtle body kit. And this is the Bentayga, Bentley's first ever car in this class. We have the ultimate W12 model, capable of getting to 62 in four seconds and going on to 187 miles an hour. So it's quicker and faster and more expensive than the SVR. Even with no extras, it costs £165,000. With both of these cars being range-topping models and both of them gunning for the same affluent markets, we thought we'd push them head-to-head -to, -head to find out which one ultimately is the most accomplished. Today we're going to test them on the track and on the road, but first, Johnny is going to see how they get on with some roughy tufty terrain. Now, you may be thinking who in their right mind is going to take such expensive hardware off-roading, but they both boast 4x4 capability, so it's our duty to test it. And anyway, if I was paying 100 grand plus, I'd want my luxury SUV to cope with anything. On the one hand, what we're doing right now feels completely fish out of water. It does with this particular car. I feel that this should be down a high street somewhere, not yeah. off-roading. But despite this, the SVR is still loaded with all of Land Rover's off-road tech. This has got seven off-road modes, actually. Seven? Yeah. You've got gravel, grass, snow. Keep your eyes on the road, please, Johnny. <laughs> Mud ruts, sand or rock crawl. These off-road modes are designed to make the Range Rover as idiot-proof as possible. So I'm going to do my best to put them to the test. Oh, my gosh. I, can't, I, I, can't look I don't this. know if I should be going down that. I'm worried that I'm just going to take that entire SVR body kit off the front. This is the weird thing. I mean... Oh, it's, it feels wrong. That's a leg cock. Oh, you've definitely cocked a leg there. Oh, oh, oh. I think that's cocky-leggy. <laughs> oh, cocky-leggy, <laughs> sir. But as our off-road excursion continued, our reservations faded. The more we're going along, the more I'm feeling that I'm in a hardcore Range Rover and not something that's been sort of slightly blinged up. It's not a sheep in wolf's clothing. Mountain goat? A mountain goat in wolf's clothing. <laughs> that's what it is. So, despite the sporting upgrades, the Range Rover's off-roading DNA remains strong. Can Bentley's first ever attempt at a performance SUV possibly compete with that sort of 4x4 heritage? Do you know the best part about this Bentley? <laughs> it's getting in it so you don't have to see the outside of it. <gasps> We've got it set on an off-road mode that's uh, appropriate, I think. Have we got yes, it on yeah. dirt and gravel? Yeah, we've got four different settings and, of course, you can up the air suspension all the way yep. to the top. Which actually gives it greater Ooh. ground clearance than the SVR. Got to love its gaudiness. Yeah. It's not a petite little thing that's got flicks and wings. But whether you like the Bentayga's looks or you don't, its curvaceous design was certainly giving me a few worries off-road. I can't, I can't actually see at all. Okay. Visibility just it's sort of the bodywork drops away. Tell you what, though, it's not bottoming out at all. The steering's considerably lighter than the SVR. Oh, is it? OK. Yeah. The throttle response is weird. It's just a little bit too sensitive and a bit too eager. On these really slow sections where I'm just trying to gently creep up it and not lose traction, yeah. it's, it's, it's wanting to go. Oh, there's a big of a leg cop. But after 30 minutes driving through the Welsh forest, the Bentley was still going strong. I think this is a deeply impressive car, considering yeah. Bentley don't really make off-roaders. Yeah. But I still truly feel that the Range Rover has got it licked off-road. The Range Rover was making easier work of it. Round one to the Range Rover off-road. I think, by a narrow margin, yeah. Range Rover has it. But now it's the open road and a chance for Bentley's luxury touring credentials to come to the fore. 
Will the Range Rover spec really be able to compete? The Range Rover Sport was the first car to get the SVR badge. Different headlights, different bumpers, different rear valance. It's very smart. I actually think the interior is nicer than the Bentayga in terms of modernity and sparseness. But do you really want something sparse when you're paying six-figure sums, Johnny? Personally, I want the full treatment. This Bentley SUV definitely feels luxurious, like I've walked into a top-end jeweller and I feel very cosseted and preened and fussed over. I mean, even the roof is double glazed. Attention to detail, I like. The Bentley might have the bling, but the SVR feels like a Swiss army knife of SUVs. You have to appreciate that in order to package a car like this that goes fast, can corner, can climb rocky, rutty, horrible mountains and paths, this is a huge amount of engineering. Well engineered, the SVR definitely is, but I'd like a bit of cosseting too, and my ride was about to get even better. So I'm going to have a little play with my settings. After that off-roading malarkey, I think comfort for me for now. Instantly, the suspension becomes softer and things just quieten down a bit. While Vicky was clearly chilling out in the Bentley, the Range Rover was now beginning to wind me up. I feel outside of my comfort zone driving this, even though I'm in comfort mode, because it's just a car which doesn't sit with my personality. It's too brash. Even with the active exhaust kind of toned down, it's still ridiculously loud. This is it with it on quiet. That's it on quiet! VBH to Johnny, how are you getting on? Crucially for me, it doesn't deliver a rewarding, exciting drive. Would you like to get out of that car and into the Bentayga? Yes, please, if that's OK. Just sitting in the Bentley seemed to calm Johnny down. Vicky, I've got a question. Apparently, the Bentayga takes 130 hours to build by the hands of 53 artisans. What is an artisan? Someone who makes pretty bread. <laughs> well, this is very attractive, robust bread. So far, I'd struggled with the concept of a performance SUV on the road, but maybe the Bentley was beginning to win me over. It's very quiet in here, 2.4 tonnes of double glazed, palatial, quite traditional surroundings, and it is a very relaxing place to be. Meanwhile, the Range Rover's more sporty character was definitely bringing out the inner hooligan in me. That noise is pretty raucous. People will know when you are coming and when you are departing. Definitely the ride is firmer in this. I feel like I'm sitting much higher than I was in the Bentayga, and it definitely feels like a Range Rover up here. The fuel economy in both of them isn't great. This is marginally better, but still low 20s MPG. Over in luxury land, I was really beginning to understand what the Bentayga was all about. There's no doubting the way in which Bentley has hidden the sheer bulk of this car on the road. The controls are light. The ride of the Bentayga I prefer to the Range Rover SVR, I think. And, like Johnny had discovered, aspects of the Range Rover were now proving less appealing. I like the fact that you put your foot down in this car, it makes noise and it goes but it is big and brash and bold. And on the road, I prefer the subtlety and the really good use of power and size that the Bentley offers. So on tarmac, I'll take the Bentley. So round two goes to the Bentley. As a road car, it simply does a better job of wafting you from A to B. So now it's one all. This is my highlight of the dogfight to see how they put their power down. Yeah, because this is the bit where you get to throw me around a track. Always happens after lunch. In these, which are essentially opulent drawing rooms on wheels. Although both weigh well over two tonnes, they have big power to compensate. 
The Range Rover has 575 horsepower and the Bentley 606. And that's why both have 0 to 62 times that would beat a Porsche 911 Carrera. But impressive statistics are one thing. Delivering in the real world is another. You got your stopwatch ready? Oh, yeah. Here. Right, in. That's a proper old school one. Our test facility is the Landau circuit, which comprises some long flowing bends and some tight twisty sections to check if these machines possess sports car-like agility. The laps are timed from a standing start. You ready? Yeah. Got your starting position? Yeah, this is my starting position, Vicky. OK, go. Oh, it's true. That was a bit noisy, wasn't Exhaust it? Exhaust is part of the sort of dynamic mode. Do you know what's ridiculous is that noise is too loud for the speed. Way too loud. It's, it's so overt yeah. compared to any jang. Listen to it cackling <laughs> and popping. It does feel, though, that the noise should belong to, like, aeroplane or something, not a car. Well, that's one of the things about the, the SVR, is it's unashamed. SVR stands for Special Vehicle Racing and is Land Rover and Jaguar's tuning division, like AMG for Mercedes and M Sport for BMW. So it's clear this Range Rover has serious sporting intent. Though I'm not sure Vicky would agree right now. Whoa, 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 Vicky. This is a oh. big car for a small truck. Oh. There is no feedback from the front end whatsoever. I almost do not know what the front tyres are doing. It's not telling me anything. Oh. Oh. I think this is just a point and squirt, Johnny. I think <laughs> just, just turn the wheel, put the throttle down and just hang on, I think. Oh, crumbs. Understeer. There's absolute zero feedback from any from my legs, my feet, my hands. Oh, uh, uh. oh, what? Oh. Oh. Hey! Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> oh my lordy lord! Can I say this now that I'm at your mercy? Yeah. I just have no interest in cars like this. <laughs> I just, I just cannot understand why they exist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's such a big slab. You ready on that stopwatch? Oh. Oh, you had enough? I'm all right, I'm all right. The Range Rover posts a time of 58.55 seconds. Can the Bentley do any better? I want to know yep. what it feels like to go around a tight track okay. in a 2.4-tonne, 187-mile-an-hour war room. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going for the grab yeah. handle straight Both away. Both of their accelerations from the off is phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's proper stuff. Oh! I'll tell you what, I've just realised I can, I can adjust my headrest with these little wings. <laughs> I'm going to need the it winglets. in a minute. The Bentley has 30 extra horsepower, but weighs 130 kilograms more, so both cars have absolutely identical power-to-weight ratios. I have to say, the body roll is less in this car, yeah. from what I can tell, immediately. It is loud. It's nowhere not near as, as loud. It's Ooh, not as over the silly. This feels much more stable. The yeah. body control in this is superior, it markedly is, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a hairpin. Oh, oh, that'll be understood. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, oh, you... Wow, you can have a bit of fun. Oh, this has surprised me. I thought the SVR would be the me superior too. track tool. I am really shocked, actually. Yeah. That suspension setup. That electric yeah. Active anti-roll system. Well, yeah. it's 48 volts, super-fast motors pumping up each side to eliminate that body roll. It's yeah. doing a fine job. Oh. I have to say, it's incredible. This is amazing. I'm yeah. really, really impressed. It's, I mean, and I like being in here because then I don't have to look at it on the outside. <laughs> I'm actually getting more feedback as well. I mean, not a huge amount, but I... You know, the car is telling me a bit more about what's going on is underneath. It? The brakes, though, aren't quite as sharp as they are in the Range Rover, and you are really feeling that 2.4 tonne. Yeah, you can't hide definitely. it. But you can hide it around the corners. Look at this. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, oh, slippery, slippery. Well, Vicky... Um, so what was the time, then? I can taste my 
my jagged potato and coleslaw. <laughs> I really can. The Bentayga crosses the line in 59.06 seconds. That's half a second slower than the SVR, but in these changeable conditions, it's clear there's virtually nothing to separate them. So, they're very, very similar, but... but the behaviour is very different. Very different. I would buy this car because it is not ashamed of being a luxurious, expensive, outrageous SUV. Yep. And for that, I got to salute it. As for me, I wouldn't choose either. For that sort of budget, I'd buy a dedicated sports saloon and a dedicated off-roader. But I will tell you this, at his first attempt, Bentley has built something on a par with the Range Rover, a badge which pretty much created this sector, and that is remarkable, although they did need a 165 grand price tag to do so.